Hi guys, welcome back to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. Okay, so today we're going to try and understand and defeat, or at least reduce, inner groove distortion, and we could say in general just simply tracking error, but mainly focused on inner groove distortion. There's lots of issues going around and lots of solutions. Want to know more? Coming up. Okay, guys, in order to reduce inner groove distortion, it's almost impossible to eliminate due to the physical characteristics of our vinyl records. So in order to reduce that, and in general, I would say tracking errors in our precious and fantastic vinyl grooves, we have two main areas, two main issues where the issues are sourced, where the issues are born. What am I talking about? Well, the first area, the first part where we have our issues connected to this type of distortion of errors is are the groove themselves. Okay, so the records themselves have problems. So that's our first point. Afterwards, we're going to see another bunch of points related instead to the cart and turntable setup, the gear. That's where most of the problems are generated, actually, apart from the inherent uh, problems related, as I said, to vinyl records themselves. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so group one, the grooves. Point A, compression, okay? This is fundamental. We're always going to have compression in the inner grooves of our records, those grooves close to the center of our label, of our, of our spindle. In fact, a good idea to reduce uh, inner groove distortion is obviously to not engrave, not cut that part of the record, but we'll, we'll get to that afterwards. So we were talking about compression. We have two types of compression, actually. First, we have length compression, because even though the uh, angle speed is the same, which means it's always 33 and one third revolution per minute, if we're talking about a normal LP or 45 or 78, whatever it is, that uh, the, the angle speed is always the same. But the linear speed is obviously different, which means that on the outer side, the record is fitting faster than the center, which means for our uh, distortion problem is that we have less amount of uh, vinyl for that same type of time, less amount of vinyl in grooved with music signal, which means instead that in contrast on the outer part, there's much more in grooved vinyl. And if we have more vinyl in grooved with a signal, like if we have more tape, with that same signal distributed on a longer piece of tape on a longer piece of vinyl, the, 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 res, the results is gonna be more dynamic. It's gonna be better. In the contrary, instead, in the center, since we have signal uh, spread over less amount of vinyl, the quality is gonna degrade. So that's already a compression in terms of length. Then we also have a compression in terms of width. Yes, because the grooves concentrated on the, on the closer part. The second half, we could say, of a, of a vinyl record the, has grooves very squished together. They start to get squished more and more, as I said, the closer we get to the spindle. And that's where we start to hear that artificial sound, those problems, the sibilance sometimes are not good. The higher frequencies are reproduced badly. There's less dynamics. You have to do that. I mean, a good vinyl cutter is going to reduce greatly the width, the amplitude of those grooves because there's no more space because they're going to have, there's going to be problems. That's why the higher frequencies are not going to be very good. And the lower frequencies, since you need more space, more amplitude are going to also be restrained. So the, the, 
there's going to be less depth in the, in the base. Plus, since these grooves are, are getting so squished together, are so little and minuscule, the cartridge itself is going to have problems getting inside and reading correctly all that. So as you start, you're starting to understand there's a lot going on connected to the issue of inner groove distortion. And this is just point A. Okay, so, and obviously we can't do much. As I said, the only thing we can do is not use that part of the record in these terms. Okay, so let's proceed. Point B, obviously something we have to take into consideration is that we have a bad cut. Yes, I mean, if everything is correct and we don't find any other solution to our problem and we have some bad distortion, maybe, maybe who cut the record didn't do such a good job. So I know we can't do anything uh, for that. I mean, it, we can suggest other people not to buy that edition. That's what we can do. But apart from that, that record is gone for good. Okay, let's proceed. Point C, off-centered spindle hole. Yes. Now this was a problem which was much more present in the past. Now it's very rare, but obviously we're also buying old records. So the problem is coming back. And poor pressings do still have this problem. What am I talking about? Well, very simple. The hole where the record is uh, meant to insert the spindle is not perfectly aligned, not perfectly centered, just slightly offset. And at that point, uh, as you can imagine, the rotation are going to be different and the grooves are not going to be completely circular. There's not going to be a perfect reading from the stylus of those grooves because they're moving in a different direction instead of being circular, which instead the tone arm is meant to do. So, as you can imagine, big problems there. Can't do much there again. That record is gone for good again. Okay, let's proceed. Now we're going to take a look at our second group, the gear issues, connected mainly to the turntable setup, but in a minor way, but mainly the cartridge and tone arm setup, okay? Let's take a look. Okay, point A. This is actually the only one dedicated to the turntable. And what is the problem? Leveling. You have to, that's always a good idea, to perfectly level your turntable. Because as you can imagine, if it's not perfectly leveled, that's obviously gonna create problems in the reading because the, the vinyl, the surface, the grooves are not completely perpendicular to the reading of the stylus. So that's something easy to check because a lot of people just set their turntables on their uh, tables, shelves, whatever they, they are, and never check if they're perfectly centered and leveled. Check it, guys. Cheap, easy, and very important. Let's proceed. Okay, something very obvious, but I have to say it. Cart alignment, the cartridge alignment is fundamental. Okay, guys? Now, I did an entire video on how to set up your turntable. Take a look at that video, because obviously I'm not gonna go in depth. But there is a lot, of, well, a few things you have to keep in mind when you align your cartridge. This is an alignment protractor. You need one in order to perfectly align your cartridge to how it must read correctly the record. Obviously connected to the type of tone arm you have. You have. In any case, take a look at that video if I don't know how to do a perfect alignment. If you do, just keep in mind that every once in a while, maybe it's a good idea to redo the alignment of the cartridge because it may move. Because if it's not perfectly aligned, it will create issues in the tracking, tracking errors, which will get harsh, which will get worse towards the center. Because that's a critical part, guys. For all these steps, the center, the inner groove, is distortion is, as we said, it's caused, caused by inherent characteristics of the vinyl, but also from our gear if we're not doing the correct things like a good alignment. Let's proceed. Point number C, anti-skating. Obviously, that is a paramount aspect because, because if it's not too strong, you're gonna have issues, or if it's too strong, you're gonna have issues. So it's something you have to keep in mind, unfortunately. 
So I highly recommend, I know they cost a little bit, but I do recommend a good test disc like the Hi-Fi News one, which is excellent because it really gives you an, a, an idea, a, a practical, a, you can hear if your stylus is wrongly positioned thanks to the type of grooves, the type of recordings they put here. So if you in if if you want to check specific frequencies, the in especially in the inner groove distortion, you can perfectly understand if you have, for example, in this case, uh, the if the anti anti skating is too strong, so it's it's slightly pulling backwards on the left, or if it's too light, then it's pulling towards the right, um, the right in the inner part. At that point, you're gonna hear something on the right loudspeaker or on the left speaker. And the only way to understand perfectly is to have something like this. Okay, guys, I told you, I warned you, let's proceed. Point number D, stylus wear. Yes, obviously, if our diamond tip, our stylus starts, obviously, you know I love the word obviously, obviously it's gonna start to consume, it's gonna start to change its shape. Maybe in a not correct way, it's gonna be consumed, like more on one side because you are you have a wrong tracking force, because you have a wrong anti-skating, etc., etc., wrong alignment. All these aspects can deliver at the end of uneven consumption of the diamond tip. And that's gonna, in return, create more distortion, more tracking errors in all parts of the of the record actually in reading of the record and especially in the inner part. So bear in mind, I made an video and how to know when your stylus is ready to hit the bin. Check the video, here's a link. And there's lots of good info to understand how to do a good analysis of your stylus. Let's proceed. Point E, stylus shape. So in general, we have higher quality types of cut of the diamond stylus, of the diamond tip of our cartridges, okay? In general, there are just better types of solution. If we're talking about inner groove distortion or simply different types of tracking arrows, linear, horizontal, or vertical, a good idea is, in, is to invest in a linear contact, okay? So linear, microlinear, and shibata are the best type of styluses. No question on it. Versus the conical and elliptical ones, obviously. So next time you're buying a cartridge, try to bear in mind also this aspect. The type of stylus. Very important to reduce this type of, of problems. Especially, as I said before, because if you have a more narrow type of stylus, in contrast with the other ones, with the elliptical and conical, it's going to fit better in the groove, and especially in those minuscule, those squished grooves in the end. That's why it's also a good idea. Let's proceed. Resonance. That's another big issue, very difficult to solve. I know there's a lot of issues, guys, but uh, just bear in mind this. All these aspects, if you try to optimize them, it's not just going to reduce, it's going to reduce the inner groove distortion. It's just going to give you a better playback, an excellent playback. Because a lot of people, we, we not a lot of people, we mostly tend to think of getting a better cartridge, a better phono preamp. Okay, that's along the road, no problem. But we also have to optimize what we have, in that we have to use it in a correct way and try to calibrate to, to set everything properly. That's that's important, and I think sometimes, me included, we forget about that. Okay, let's go back to our resonance problem. What is the problem? The problem is, okay, now I, did, I made a dedicated video on this, on the compliance issue, on the total mass of the arm plus the cartridge. These are fundamental aspects to, uh, in order to reduce or control the resonance of your tone arm. Here is a link. Check that video. It's it's quite complicated, but it'll give you all the details in order to address, in order to pick the right tone arm if you have to, if you're choosing that, or pick the right cartridge for your tone arm, and vice versa. Okay, so check that video. In any case, what is the problem? The problem is that around, I would say, 
8, 9, all the way up to 15 hertz, we have some problems in the lower frequencies. And the arm is going to start to vibrate. And in some cases, a lot. It's going to jump away from the groove in, in, in bad cases. That's something else that a, disc, a test disc will reveal, okay? Because it's, it's cool. I mean, when you start to see that thing wiggling, it's, it's amazing. Obviously, what we're trying to do is to reduce that, to control that. And the two key factors, as I said before, is the compliance of your cartridge, which simply means how elastic is the cantilever and all the suspension system of your cartridge, because that is directly connected to how your torn arm is going to behave. And that is strictly connected to the mass of the tone arm plus the screws plus the counterweight plus everything that is connected to your torn arm and obviously the cartridge. So that's why it is important to know these values in order to make the best decision and reduce that resonance that is that really might kill the soul out of your records in, when, when we have those lower frequencies. Okay, let's proceed. Point G. No, we're not talking about pornography. Uh, point G is dedicated to tone arm length. Yes, because as you probably know, we have uh, 8 inch, 9 inch, 10 inch, 12, all the way up to 12, or even transcript records use 15, I think, or 17 inch, but that's something different. Okay, the main type, the main lengths of tone arms are between 8 and 12. And in this case, to reduce inner groove distortion, the best thing is to have a long arm. Why is that? Because it just follows better how the grooves were cut. Uh, the offset does not have to be so uh, present like in other types of, of, uh, of tone arm. Uh, and, that, and in that case, you, you need less anti-skate. It's just, it's just the tracking error, mainly the linear tracking error, is reduced. So if you can, it's better, usually better, to go for a 12-inch arm. Although, although, if you use that, you're going to have more mass, as we were talking about that this problem before. So you really need to pay attention to find a perfect matching with your cart if you're using that type of length. Okay, just you just have to keep in mind these aspects. It's also the fun. I know it seems complicated, but it is fun to tune all of this and have uh, a fabulous sound after you you worked on all of these aspects. So, now don't kill yourself if you have a 10-inch arm. No problem. There are other solutions. But if you have to choose what to get, I would suggest that in order to reduce this problem. Okay, let's proceed. Point H. Directly connected to the prior point is the tone arm shape. If we have a, a curved type of tone arm or an S-shaped like the one on, on Technics or a good uh, angle of the head of our tone arm where we have the cartridge at the, at the end, we're going to have more offset, okay, respect to the center of, of the pivotal type of tone arm. We're going to have this amount of offset, as you can see in this image, and that offset just tracks better the grooves and greatly diminishes the type of tracking error that we're talking about, that we're trying to eliminate. Not only in a groove distortion, on all types of, uh, on all parts of the record. Uh, while in contrast, a straight arm does, it's never going to be perfectly perpendicular to the grooves. It's not, it's just not going to follow them properly. So if you do have a good angle of your cartridge or a good angle, an offset on your arm, that's going to greatly help reducing this type of error in tracking error. Okay, guys, let's proceed. Okay, again, another point dedicated to tone arms, point I, the tone arm type, because as you can imagine, a tangential or a linear type of tracking which means, if you don't know, uh, in contrast with the pivotal type, we have the so-called tangential one, where the, uh, a motor drags the uh, tone arm always in the perfectly perpendicular along the reading of the record. It's moving this way instead of 
this way, okay? It just moves along an axis and it's, it's it doesn't have any type of errors that way. Also, we have to remember that records are cut that way. The lathe is cut tangentially. So, as you can imagine, this brings great benefit, benefits to the reading. Although, there is a downside. Because, as you can imagine, having a motor uh, layer on top of your turntable moving your, your, your tone arm, if it isn't perfectly or very well engineered, and it's very rare, we're talking about high, high-end models, you're going to have more problems coming from another side because that's going to bring vibrations. It's going to bring rumble. It's just going to bring other types of issues in the reading. So it's not the solution to everything, a tangential type of, of tone arm. It's cool to try if you can, but bear in mind that sophisticated designs are uh, truly effective. Those cheaper ones, ah, I would stick with a normal type of tone arm possibly with a good offset or with a good length. Okay, guys, let's proceed. Okay, so we've reached the end of these two groups. Just two aspects we have to keep in mind in order to reduce this type of problem, especially the inner groove distortion. Not to record, not to cut the lathe in the inner part of our records. In fact, I'll, um, it's, it's a good practice now, especially on audiophile labels, not to cut that part of the record, as I was saying. Like now there's this great trend to do 45 RPM records, which I do not like, uh, because you have to get up every 10 minutes, you have two records, uh, everything costs more, uh, et cetera, et cetera, in any case. But the good part is, as you can see, like for example, in this case, all this part that we all, almost have two, I would say two, two and a half centimeters of nothing engraved here which is perfect. I mean, this, this is the good part of the record and you're not going to have almost any problems here. So that's obviously a good solution. And if you have a, a lot of material on your record and you just have to cut the whole damn lathe, then obviously what are people doing? What are record labels house doing? But it's good to know to put uh, the, the, the most simple types of tracks at the end of each side where we have not too much dynamics, where, the, where the, the, the music isn't that complex. Because unfortunately, if you have the tracks in that part, there are going to be some issues and the quality is just going to be worse than the first track on the beginning of each side. That's how it is, guys. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Please write other solutions if you, if you have them on how to reduce, in general, linear, vertical, uh, tracking error or just inner groove distortion uh, focused on this point. I'm very interested in this. Thank you guys for watching and remember music is born analog. Well guys, if you're enjoying my videos and you're enjoying my channel, please consider to subscribe by clicking the black and white logo here below. Also, don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll never miss an episode and you will become a true member of the analog community.